Hello everyone, I'm Casper Kuma and welcome back to the Home Safety Hotline. Let's get traumatized again! What horrible, horrible creatures do you have in store for us today? Logging in user 336. We got a new video, Science Mysteries. The Lighthouse. Is it in the sky? Is it in the space? Is the sun the lighthouse? Today, we will find out. <laughs> or maybe not. The mystery of mice. Mice? What's so mysterious about mice? Mice. One of humanity's oldest friends and oldest enemies. From the Black Plague to the shelves of our pet stores, mice have lived alongside humans for centuries. And just like humans, mice may even be evolving alongside us as well. This is a mus musculus, otherwise known as the common house mouse. And this is mus musculus loquentis, Liquid. otherwise known as the smart mouse, a newly discovered species known for its uniquely colored iris, and more importantly, it's increased intelligence. Mice have brains smaller than peanuts, and yet modern science has observed they are capable of thinking quite intelligently. And in the case of the smart mouse, perhaps even capable of communication. With the help of modern computer technology, today's scientists have been able to interpret the previously indecipherable squeaks of a smart mouse and have discovered what seems to be hidden messages within. Let's take a listen. It's so weird. <laughs> what? Help me. What do you think? Is this a wonder of evolution? Or are we just hearing things that aren't there? Do mice and men have more in common than previously thought? Well, I suppose that's what makes this a science mystery. Of mice and men. I don't know if I believe that, but, you know, we'll go along with it. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like somebody was just putting out whatever. I don't know if that was really what the mouse was saying. <laughs> Subject line, introducing our new office pet from HSH Corporate. Hello, Home Safety Hotline family. We're excited to introduce you to all of you our brand new office pet, Whiskers. Whiskers is loyal, friendly, and is as serious as about pest controls as we are. Please give Whiskers a warm welcome if you see him wander by your desk. Please refrain from picking up or feeding Whiskers as he's still getting to know everyone in the office and has scheduled feeding times. Wait, but I don't get to see this cat. Am I actually in office? I thought I was working remotely. Because <laughs> everybody's sending me emails, but I don't know. I guess I guess people still get emails sent who are in, in office with other people. But I want to pet that cat. Uh, Silver medallion. Daily coupon. What? Congratulations, employee. Your high accuracy rate has awarded you today's daily coupon. Today's daily coupon is a silver medallion. The medallion is 100% pure silver and comes free with an iron charm for a chain for convenience. It's for safety both in and out of the home. Never let the medallion leave your sight. Supply is limited to one, so get it while you can. To receive your discount, simply type the following code during your online checkout. Pedal to the metal. <laughs> uh, keep up the great work, employee. Okay, it's still look pretty damn expensive. Do I have enough money for that? I I want it though, if if it'll protect me. <laughs> Where do I get this? Online checkout. I don't even think we have a shopping option in here. Hmm. I want it though. <laughs> Whatever. Guess we're going to work. Uh I feel like I got scammed. Hmm. I wonder. Can you get it anywhere in the medallion? I'm pretty sure that we don't have any kind of ordering thing in here. I don't think we can order anything from the emails, right? Hmm. Whatever. Welcome, play. Please get in the shift. 
clock it in. I'm here and I'm ready to go. All right, what do we got this time? Anything new? I remember last time we had the problem of them starting to like not like show all the information. So I guess we have to study up. It's been a while, so hopefully I remember things. Hello, Supervisor Carol here again. I've been watching the closely employee. The I'm closely. So far by your dedication to accuracy. I have once again updated your permission, so you should have access to more extensive household hazard information. Keep up the great work, employee. Our eyes rest upon me. Don't just call me employee. I have a name, you know. Permissions have been updated. Okay, we got a whole bunch of stuff. Attic gnome. Oh my god, I'm busy. I think the map is something wrong with our faucet. Recently, I've been having the worst kind of stomach bug. Just aches and pangs constantly. But after a month, still hasn't gone away, and I'm thinking there's got to be something wrong with the water, because... We only eat fresh, homegrown fruits and vegetables here, and we ain't never had any problems until now. I keep hearing things about rusted pipes and water poisoning and all kinds of terrible things that can happen to the water, so can you just send someone out to get this fixed for us? Hmm. Don't you know? The water's turning the frogs Jeez, gay. <laughs> I don't think it's pro I don't think it's gonna be an attic gnome. Hmm. Are subspecies of gnome known to nest in attics and ceilings? Homeowners infested with attic gnomes will often report knocking or rapping sound coming from their ceilings, or surposts of dust coming from the ventilation systems. Attic gnomes' feeding habits can be, often be a boon to homeowners as they consume dust, cobwebs, and household pests such as spiders in large quantities. However, when frightened, they will violently expel their meals, which can send large quantities of dust particles into the air, causing air quality and issues in the household. They are very easily frightened. We should probably read up on the new stuff, just so we have it in our minds. We'll just kind of hope I remember the other stuff. I remember this guy. He was terrifying. Ugh, I hate that. Ugh. What's this? Cellar grotto. Cellar grottos are large cave-like networks known to sometimes appear spontaneously in cellars and basements. Homeowners with cellar grottos will often report a bad smell coming from the basement, higher humidity in the home, a notable increase in large beetles, frogs, and related pests. Cellar grottos can introduce a number of dangerous pests into the home, and the heightened humidity they introduce can cause warped floorboards, weakened foundation, and other hazards. Okay. Mmm. Bay feast. Feasts are mid to large sized piles of various edible food substances, frequently including flour, cornmeal, and various species of fungi. They are known to appear near eating areas of the home. Danger. Feasts are not dangerous to consume, but if left untouched, it can provoke more dangerous activity, or else its continued presence can attract other household pests such as cockroaches or carpenter ants. Oh, well, that's not too bad. Uh, feasts are a sign of hospitable pres uh, presence. And, oh my god, I need to... Somebody keeps texting me. There we go. You've been silenced. <laughs> Feasts are a sign of hospitable presence, and as such should be consumed immediately once cited to prevent provoking or offending the gifter. For maximum assured safety, all the members of the home should partake in the feast. Hmm. Well, that's not so bad. I I don't know. I've always heard people say that fays are, like, evil or whatever. So, I don't know. It sounds like they're just kind of giving you a welcoming meal. That's not too bad. And the worst that can happen is, like, you get ants or roaches. At least you don't get, like, boggarts. Fay flu is a rare dan and dangerous disease commonly spread by the household fay. Symptoms of fay flu include headaches, fever, eye distortion, uh, not distortion, eye discoloration, seeds taking root in skin pores, and blooming. Fay flu is rarely fatal, but it can have long-lasting effects on the lifetime health and the health of an affected human. Uh, Long-term symptoms commonly include dizziness, fatigue, monocolored vision, deliriousness, and endless dreams. There's no cure. However, one can take precautions against it by keeping clean, fay-free home. Hmm, well, that's awful. I don't like this. That's gross. Floor roots. Floor roots are tree-like brown roots that are known to grown up, grow upwards from the floor to wrap themselves around various objects or humans in their vicinity. That's not good. Floor roots grow slow enough that they serve very little danger to awake and aware human adults. However, if not spotted quickly, they are known to strag- uh, there are known strangling 
hazard for human children with and pets while they sleep. Removal should be a priority in family households. Okay, I don't think we really know how to, like, solve the problem. I think we just have to know how to, like, identify it. The Horde. The Horde is an invisible, odorous collective consciousness that is known to collect and store large quantities of common household refuse. The Horde's tendency to store vast quantities of trash in the home make them prone to spreading disease to the home's inhabitants. Rotten food, used syringes, and rusty metal are among the more common household hazards that can be introduced by the Horde's presence. Hmm. Laundry gnome? None of these are really coming up with anything about the faucet. It might be an older thing. Laundry gnomes are a subspecies of gnome with thick, fiber-like fur. They can fold their bodies into various shapes and often resemble dirty towels. Homeowners with laundry gnomes often report loud rattling or banging sounds coming from their washing machine and missing socks. Laundry gnomes pose no direct threat to humans, though their lifestyles often lead to broken washing machines or dryers, which can occasionally cause small floods. Water damage can lead to further problems in the home, and as such, laundry gnomes should not be left to their own devices. Okay, night gnome. Huh, that was creepy. Night gnomes are small, hairy creatures with a pointed head. They are known to the, for their tendency to enter the sleeping quarters of humans to watch them while they sleep. Homeowners affected by night gnomes frequently report sighting them in the middle of the night, or report heavy breathing sounds during late hours. Night gnomes are no not known to be deadly to humans, but those who s suffer from heart conditions should, should consider wearing sleeping masks to prevent being startled by the presence. Well, at least they only watch you. They'll move on to other inhabitants, uh, become born rest by your- okay. Well, they don't seem that bad. It's a night wisp. Night wisps are a species of wisp in the form of bright floating lights. They are known to hover outside windows at night while whispering promises of wealth and good fortune. Night wisps are not dangerous to humans unless listened to. Refrain from listening to their whispers and follow their directions. And following their directions. Do not follow their directions. <laughs> night wisps will move to the other homes after a week, so if they are ignored consistently as vides, drown out the whispers with music and blah blah blah. Okay, portal? Portals are door-shaped openings to outdoor location other than the homeowners discovered uh, other than the homeowners discovered most commonly in the basement or underground cellars. Homeowners with portals frequently report cold drafts, strange dreams, and strong desire to enter. Portals can introduce a wide variety of dangerous elements to a home and should be dealt with as soon as they discover it. They can additionally cause drafts, including heating problems to the home. Seedling? Seedlings are small insectoid creatures about the size of an aphid. They're known for burrowing in outdoor planters or gardens, feeding off the roots of nearby weeds. Though the weed-killing weed lifestyles can make them useful for gardeners, seedlings are extremely territorial and react violently to anything competing for their food, resource, uh, for food source. Never remove a weed from a seedling-infested garden. They're known to compel competitors to commit violent acts on themselves or others. Hmm. Alright, we have one more. Travel gnome. It's a suitcase. Travel gnomes are a highly invasive subspecies of gnome that are known to stow away inside the luggage of unsuspecting travelers to introduce, introduce themselves to new households. They are found most commonly in highly forested areas of the globe. Travel gnomes can affect the household in various ways. They off will often create expensive gardens inside their new homes, leaving soil, plants, and common outdoor pests in their wake. These gardens, in addition to introducing a variety of dangerous pests, can also create a foundational problem in a home if they continue to grow un unabated. Alright, well... None of these super duper sound like what this guy's dealing with. Something wrong with our faucet. Recently, I've been having the worst kind of stomach bud, just aches and pains constantly. But after a month, it still hasn't gone away. I'm thinking there's gotta be something wrong with the water because we only eat fresh, homegrown fruits and vegetables here and we never had any problems up until now. I keep hearing things about what rusty pipes and watering poisoning and all kinds of terrible things that can happen to the water. Okay, mm, let's see if it's some wine spirit. He didn't say he was drinking wine though, so... Probably not that. Do we, don't we have like a faucet demon in here? Pipe growth, pipe hob. Type of fungus that are known for making homes inside damp, uh, homes inside damp tube-like structures such as pipes. Uh, do they known to make loud bubbling after they eat? Do they do anything? 
Harmless to humans. Okay, what about a pipe hob? Hob goblin. Pipe hobs are a subspecies of hob. They are known for making homes inside tube-like structures. They bear no false face. They're much smaller than most hobs. They commonly emerge to consume dirt, grime, blah blah blah. Okay, well they're more of a cleaner, so I don't think it's them. Uh, I don't know if a frozen pipe would do this. Pipes freezing, expanding, causing stoppages, cracks, and leaks. Nothing about causing stomach aches, though. I mean, he's not growing any flowers on his face. So I don't think it's a fey flu. Uh, about carbon monoxide. Mm, headaches, dizziness, lethargy. Not stomach aches, though. Yeah, just he's got stomach bugs. Hmm. What about black mold? Hmm. Breathing problems. That's not our problem. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Um. What about tea sprite? I mean, I guess we could be looking at things that have to do with, like, fruits and vegetables, too. Because it might not be the water. It might be something that actually has something more to do with the fruits and vegetables. Hmm. It's known to feed off of tea and tea leaf residue. Uh, not directly dangerous humans, but are known to spread deadly diseases such as fey flu. Okay, I don't think it's that. Unicorn fungi? No, this is for dogs. What about a wood secretion? No. Mmm. I didn't say anything about whistling, so I don't think it's that. What's the seedling do? No, commit violent acts. Doesn't have anything to do with your stomach. Mmm. No, that steals your identity. That's not it. What about mice? Just because we just had that whole documentary on them. Nope. Hmm. Um. What about a horde? Will that do anything? Rotten food, maybe. Ownerless collective consciousness known to collect and store large quantities of common household refuse. Hordes tend to store vast quantities of trash in the home, make them prone to spreading disease to the home's inhabitants. Rotten food, used syringes, and rusty metal are among the more common house uh, uh, household houses that can be introduced by the Horde's presence. Once it's introduced to a home, the Horde will continue to gather and hoard their treasures indefinitely. Find the cells of one's home at first side of the hordes, hordes presence to make the relocation process go over more smoothly. Would that be it though? If it can cause rotting food? Mm, rusty metal, that would... Uh, I would assume rusty metal would affect your pipes. But I don't know, I'm not like completely sold on it. Cause, I don't know, it just it doesn't feel right. <laughs> I feel like you'd notice if there was just a bunch of trash in your basement, or if you were eating rotten food, I feel like you'd see it before it'd be a problem. I don't think it's that. What about a false beet? That's a that's a plant. False beets are creatures with beet-like appearances that are known to trick gardeners into harvesting and eating them by disguising themselves among their vegetables. False beets are harmless unless eaten by human, at which point they will take root in the human stomach, feeding off its nutrients for its lifetime. This can cause digestive issues and potential back problems over the course of a human's life. I think we have our answer. False beets only find themselves in gardens that grow beets. If you do not wish to contend with false beets, it's advised to avoid growing beets. This wall of false beet cannot be removed without killing its host. What? <laughs> oh, so sorry, buddy. You're about to die. I believe that's our answer, though. I don't see any other vegetables on the menu. I think, I think you have a false beet problem. 
I wish we could just uh, like submit on this side so we didn't have to go through this list, but this is fine. There you go. I think I have your answer. Good luck. You're gonna die. <laughs> There's no cure. Um, sorry. <laughs> You're, you and your family's all dead. Hello, you've reached the home safety hotline. I don't the like your face. told me to call this number, so <laughs> I, uh, hope I got the right number here. Anyway, uh, I think... I think somebody uh -oh. is stalking me. I can see their shadow at night at my window, just staring into the house. When I close the window, I can still hear him out there, breathing. I've been sleeping on the couch every night this past week, just so he won't see me. Mm. The police said they can't do anything, so please, send somebody or do something about this. I can hardly sleep anymore. Okay, I'm thinking it's either a gnome or a boggart. Let me just refresh on the boggart activity. A uh, large human, hairy humanoid, six to seven feet tall, and then how decay. It's not that. Oh, wait, it might be. They're known for causing household accidents such as flooding fires or electric outages. They also frequently observe their targets while they sleep. Wreck very violently when seen by humans. And they excel at staying hidden. But I don't know if it's that, because. She's able to find it pretty easily, and it doesn't, like, try to murder her <laughs> when it sees her. So I don't know if it's that. Um, where is that gnome? Because look at this little creep. Known for the tendencies to enter the sleeping quarters of human to watch the sleep. By port sighting in the middle of the night, report heavy breathing, that, uh, breathing sounds. That's it, right? Yeah, we hear him out there breathing. That's the one. You've got a night gnome. You're welcome. I take tips. Night gnome. There we go. Boom. Would you like to tip 15% or more? Please. Done. Bingo. We're gonna get so many coupons for $300 medallions. <laughs> Wonderful. How many more do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we have a couple. We have a lot more that we don't have access to yet. Hello, yes. I Belinda. believe there may be some kind of problem with our home ventilation. Hmm. Lately, we've been hearing awful banging noises coming from the ceiling, and the air quality seems to have been drastically reduced. My daughter hasn't been able to stop coughing. It could be a couple Please of things. Hold. I feel like I saw a couple of things I could do that. I don't think it was wood secretions. Um. Pipe. Uh, pipe growth? Mm, no, they make bubbling sounds, but they won't affect your house too much. Mmm. No, it's not have anything to do with ventilation. Fracture hob? No, oh, gross. No, no, no. It's got to be one of these like things that grow places. I think. Limey residue. Hmm. What about Silicrado? High humidity. Didn't say anything about them having animals around. What about carbon monoxide? Could just be carbon monoxide. Poorly installed, maintained stove and water heater appliances result in poor ventilation. Homeowners affected by CO poisoning will also often report head headaches, dizziness, or lethargy. Can cause death in humans and pets with enough exposure. Is deadly serious threat, and the homeowners should take precautions to prevent its buildup. Would it be this? I don't know if it's that though, because there's also a banging sound. Mm, black mold. No, we need something that can make noises. Attic gnome. 
Subspecies of gnome known to nest in attics and ceilings, homeowners infested with attic gnomes will often report knocking or rapping sounds coming from their ceilings or a surplus of dust coming out of their depth ventilation systems. Things apps can often be a boon to homeowners as they consume dust, cobwebs, and household pests such as spiders in large quantities. However, when frightened, they will violently expel their meals, which can send large quantities of dust particles in the air, causing air quality issues in the house. They are easily frightened. Could this be it? I mean, the problem is that they will, like, kind of improve your air quality until you see them. So it's like, did he spook them? We'll keep the attic gnomes in the back of our minds and we'll just keep looking for a little bit longer. No. Flurry? No, we already read that. This will just grab you. No. Night gnome? What's a night gnome? Oh no, we just did that. Duh. <laughs> Night Wisp. Uh, no, they're not a problem. Hype Hob? No, they clean things. What about a seedling? No, they attack you in your garden. Mmm. Will Hob? No. Whistling fungi? Mmm. No. Wood secretions? No. Wood secretions can be deadly. Humans causing rapid translation in flesh and congestion. Eh, no. I don't know. I think it's probably an attic gnome. Probably. I mean, what about frozen pipes? Hazard during cold seasons. Uh, no, nothing about air quality. I, I feel like it's got to be an attic gnome, even though I feel like they're supposed to improve quality, but if they're like super duper easily frightened, then maybe, maybe they've been accidentally spooking them. We'll call it an attic gnome. I don't know. It's the best I can do. We'll hope for the best. Yeah, I don't think any of these others would really work out for that. What about common hob? No, because I feel like the hobs are just cleaners until they metamorphosize and then they become awful. Awful, awful creatures. Hmm. Ah! Welcome, you've reached the home safety hotline. Please help me! The police refused to do anything! They told me to call you! So please say you can help! My, my little boy, Jeremy, has gone missing! He's eight years old and such a sweetheart! The last time I saw him was when I was tucking him into bed last night and checking his messy closet for bees to calm him down! I know, but my poor Jeremy is always so concerned about bees and, and wasps and stuff. What? I miss him. I miss hmm. him so much. Please, please, please say you can help me find him. He's all that I have. Okay, so it's a child, and the kid's been hearing buzzing noises. So it's probably like a hob or something that kidnapped them or something. Maybe? I mean, I don't think it'd be like a gopher or anything, you know? <laughs> if the kid went missing. Hmm. What about Night Wisp? Hmm. I mean, they whisper, but I don't know if that's really a buzzing sound. Mmm, whistling fungi? No, they're also whistling. 
I feel like we're looking for like a buzzing sound. Something that kidnaps children. That's what we need. False rose bush. An orange plant like creature that co most commonly takes appearance of a red rose bush. In place of roots, creatures have two small humanoid feet that they use to chase down prey. Homeowners with false rose bushes of sometimes abort missing pets or children. False rose bush. Pose incredible dangers to human homeowners with children or pets as their diet consists of small mammals. And they're known to be fast and efficient hunters. Homeowners without children and pe or pets uh, face reduced risk as they cannot swallow whole anything larger than themselves. But does it make a buzzing noise? These ones that are called false seem to be the ones that kidnap things. Seemingly human-designed objects that can manifest suddenly inside a home. They are known for making gentle buzzing noises or sounds that can usually only be heard by very young human children or small pet or small animals. Owners with false artifacts often report out-of-place objects or missing children and pets. That's the one. False artifacts will not direct threat to hum adult humans. It can pose a significant risk to small human children and animals. Should a child or pet be left alone with a false artifact, they are at risk of being encased thin. Once in case, no noise made by the prey can be heard. While digestion can take upwards of several years of complete, starvation can be more pressing concern. How long has your kid been missing? <laughs> Hopefully not long. Mm, once this false artifact has been identified, removal is as simple as physically moving the object out of one's home. HSH Pest, re removal, pest Removal Services should be called to come and remove the object. Should a pet or loved one be already be encased within, one can utilize a memory wish to speed up the grieving process. Oh no! <laughs> you can't get them out? Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, but I do believe this is your problem. A false artifact. That sucks. I thought we would have time if it didn't digest them yet. Oh, so sorry about this. Oh, I hope she doesn't call back. <laughs> okay, sorry. So sorry about your loss. We will send you a, a whispering wisp as soon as possible. Whatever it is. Hi. I'm concerned somewhat about the stability of my new home. I recently finalized the purchase and naturally afterwards found that there are several large cracks in the walls of the basement that were not previously disclosed, as well as several pieces of half-eaten cheese littered across the basement floor. I haven't been able to get in contact with the previous owners about this, and I'm wondering if you can offer any kind of legal advice. Hmm. I mean, it could be a mouse. <laughs> or it could be something a bit more evil. It could be a smart mouse. What is with mice infestation common report? Gnaw marks, round, small round droppings, and sounds of squeaking. Hmm. Nothing about leaving cheese everywhere, though. Several large cracks in the walls of the basement. Mm. Walls of the basement. Little growth. Nothing to do with cheese. <laughs> uh. Hmm. Floor... no, not floor roots, because they just grab things. Where was it? I thought there was something like a... Some sort of wall thing. A fracture hob. There it is. Fracture hobs are subspecies of hob that are known to cause cracks and fractures in the walls of homes they inhabit. 
They're physically similar to other hobs in stature and size, and the exception of generally longer, wilder hair locks, they also bear a false face. Fracture hops are not dangerous on their own, but the fractures and cracks can, they cause can lead to foundational issues in the home. Like any other hob, they are also capable of metamorphosizing. Fracture hops cannot be removed once they nest. To prevent further damage, measures to prevent metamorphosis should be taken as soon as possible. It's advised, leaving, it's advised to leave out a slice of any kind of cheese each night before going to bed. Oh, so they knew they had fracture hobs, the last homeowners. Okay, well, I have your answer. Good luck with that. Sell the house as soon as possible. Where is it? There you go. Fracture hob. Boom. I mean, I guess if I was selling my house, I wouldn't tell people about the potential fracture hob you have to feed the cheese tax to every night. <laughs> it seems kind of like a deal breaker. Especially if it can turn into a bogger. <laughs> no, thank you. Welcome to the Home Safety Hotline. How may I help you? What's up with your eyes? The studio. You know what I mean. Oh, We almost got a song at the end of that. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. <laughs> well, that was weird. It's that weird guy that I'm pretty sure used to work here. <laughs> Maybe. Oh dear. Hello? Hey, so my doctor told me I should call this number. I have no idea why. He won't tell me anything. He said you could help, so here goes nothing, I guess. Um, so I've recently been having just the worst headaches and just barely I woke up and felt my eyes were starting to look kind of pink. I'm really freaked out right now and I'm not sure what I have. I can't find anything online. Can you help me? Hmm. Okay. Headache and pink eyes. It couldn't be Hello? something normal. Surprisingly. <laughs> well, let's see black. Oh, God. Oh, we're so screwed. Carbon monoxide. Oh, oh, man. Oh, no. Okay. Headaches. Eyes looking pink. Are we really not going to be able to... <laughs> Could it be a fey flu or something? Damn. I have no idea. Mm. It's been too long, so I don't remember most of the old information. Mm. Worst headaches. Looking kind of pink. Um, I don't think fungi would cause that. Um, we could say it's carbon monoxide. <laughs> I don't know. It could be black mold. Could be. Could be the fey flu. I don't know though. Cause I feel like fey flu. I don't know if pink eye was part of it. Wasn't... You could see in monochrome or something like that. And you got, like, flowers on your face. I mean, I guess it could potentially be pink flowers, but... Mm, I don't know... Carbon monoxide? What was it with the carbon monoxide? Um... I don't know if carbon monoxide would make your eyes start turning pink. Most likely just suffocate you, right? 
or how, whatever happens, you probably see hallucinations, right? Isn't that what it does? Isn't that why people sometimes think they have ghosts in their house because of carbon monoxide poisoning? I don't know if it's black mold. Ah, uh, I, I don't know. I think I'll just say Faye flew just because of the pink part. Like, he could potentially be turning into a flower, but I don't know. But I feel like better safe than sorry. If it does turn out to be a totally normal human problem, then good for him. But if it's the Faye flu, then you might want to get that checked out. I don't know. I'm sorry. We're probably going to get that one wrong. He's going to come calling us back and be like, yo, what the hell? Are you too super bad at your job or whatever? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Hello. Please let the network start working again. You got to tell me what's going on inside my home, okay? I'm freaking out over here. There's holes all over my freaking house, man. Freaking holes. I'm stepping mm. around big wooden splinters. There's no telling how much damage there is. I've got this big gaping one in my kitchen that I have no idea how freaking deep it goes. To top it all off, my skittish little greyhound goblin is nowhere to be found. She probably took off after seeing this mess. I need help. Hmm. Please help. I feel like this could have been one of those little grabber things. Might have grabbed the, grabbed the dog. I don't think the portal was right. I think portals are usually bigger. Where is it? The little grabber. Um, what was it called? Oh, flurries. Oh, thank God. Oh wait, I want to read. I want to read the Fay thing well, now that we have the internet back. Fay flu. Seems to Fay in he headaches, uh, fever, eye discoloration. Hey, we might have been correct. All right, cool. We'll just count that as a good one. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, where was it? Floor roots. Tree-like brown roots that are known to grow upwards from the floor and wrap themselves around various objects or humans in their vicinity. Did they form holes, though? Floor roots require something to wrap around before they will cease to grow, so it's advised to acquire dolls or similar human-shaped effects simile to give them a safer alternative. Place the dolls in the affected room and leave the roots alone for the night. By morning, the dolls and the roots should be gone. And the room should be safe to inhabit once more. Make any repairs to the floor as needed and utilize HSH's home repair services. It could be that. Holes all over the freaking house, man. Freaking holes. Step around big wooden splinters. Big gaping one in my kitchen. I want to see if there's anything more specific. Kitchens? Just in case it's like something else. Could be like a little uh, hob or whatever. Hmm, this one in the kitchen at all? No. Fracture hob? Did we just do that? Hmm. I don't think it's a horde. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Is it just a raccoon? That'd be nice if it's just a raccoon. I'm just through the garbage. No. Thing that can cause a hole. Small holes in the drywall, squeaky floorboards. But the dog is gone, right? Yeah, goblins nowhere to be found. I don't know. It's probably, probably the floor roots.
Yeah, I don't think any of the Hobbs kidnap. What about a false rosebush? That could kidnap. She's down prey. Mm, but I don't think it goes inside the house. We already did a false artifact. It'd be weird if it did them twice. Large cave net like networks. Mm. Can cause more floor birds. But I feel like it'd be like, hey, yeah, there's like a whole lake in my basement, or like it's really humid or something. So I don't think it's that. I don't think it's a bogger. No, I'm guessing it's gotta be floor creature, floor roots. I mean, it makes sense. It'd form holes everywhere. So, I don't know, we'll call floor roots. Also, his dog's missing. I just feel like it fits. Oops. Okay, floor roots. Have a happy time. Good luck with that. What's it sound like? Ew. We haven't yet had to use audio as a as a clue. Wonder if we're gonna have to do that soon. Ah, you've reached the home safety hotline. What do you want? All right, I'm gonna need someone to explain what in the name of Christmas is happening to my living room. Christmas. I'm back from vacation, and the house is already turning into a disaster. Not twenty-four hours later. And my living room is absolutely covered in soil and plants. Looks like a gosh darn nursery in there. Nursery. What is happening? Is is this what happens when you buy a bad rug or something? <laughs> I feel like we saw something about something bringing Please the garden hold. to you. <laughs> it was one of the new ones. We're getting all the new ones for this one. What was it though? No. Um. Was it a travel gnome? Often create expansive gardens inside their new homes, leaving soil, plants, and common outdoor pests in their wake. These gardens, in addition to introducing a variety of dangerous pests, can also create foundational problems in the home if they continue to grow un unabated. It's gotta be this. Because they just went traveling, they come back and now their house is covered in plants. It's gotta be a travel gnome. Travel gnome, travel gnome, travel gnome. There you go. Have fun. Can you do anything about it? Spraying pesticides and weed killer in the home can deter travel gnomes guarding prospects, at which point we'll wait for a new opportunity to travel to a better location to encourage the travel gnome to relocate. One can invite others to stay at their household and create new opportunities for the travel gnome to stow away in their well, visitor's I luggage. That sucks. <laughs> bad, news. bad news is the info you sent wasn't any help at all. Oh, man. So, uh, Who are you again? Thanks for that. Good news is I found Goblin. She freaking came crawling oh, out of that hole roots. with a big bump on her head or something. So uh -oh. I'm taking her to the vet now. But, uh, yeah. Thanks hmm. for trying, I guess. Yeah, I wasn't super solid on that one. I wonder what it was. Oh, could have been the unicorn fungi if it's got a bump on the head. Oh. Fury's digging outside or inside the home. Oh. There's something, Oops. something in my basement. I don't know what it is. All I know is when I open my basement door, it smells like a damn sewer and I can hear it making all kinds of horrible noises. It sounds like there might be a lot of water down there too. I don't know what it might be doing down there, but I have a feeling it's causing a whole lot of damage. Please, send somebody to help with this. I can't deal with something like this. Sounds like you got a horde or a grotto in your basement. Please but the good news is the dog's gonna live, so that's good. Let's see the horde.
Invisible odorless collective. Did it say it smelled? It smells like a damn sewer. So it's not that. Um, what about a grotto? Large cave-like networks known to appear spontaneous in cellars and basements. Homeless will report a bad smell coming from the basement. Higher humidity in the home. Noticeable increase in large beetles, frogs, and early pests. Sounds like there might be a lot of water down there. It's gotta be this. Right? How do you solve it? Cellar grottos can be removed by finding their creator and presenting them with a gift of gold. The creator often resides somewhere within the grotto sub subterranean lake for safety brings spelunking and snorkeling equipment for your excursion or consider utilizing hshh's gr grotto removal team use the grotto removal team don't go in there <laughs> especially if you have to go meet something that sounds awful i've been seeing a lot of like tiktoks about people that go spelunking and then they get trapped in there and then they die i don't know why anybody does it <laughs> it sounds like a horrible time um but yeah, I believe this is your problem. Cellar Grotto. There you go. Cellar Grotto. Like, what are you meaning, though? It didn't say who, like, what the disposition of the, the creature that created it is, you know? We got an 88% accuracy. How many does that mean we missed? Like, two? Well, we only got one call for one that... We messed up but i feel like then that would have been 90 so i feel like we got at least two wrong right <laughs> i don't know i can't do math i can't figure out percentages we'll just continue to go on as we are <laughs> got a mail do not come to the af hole mike I hole is breached. I repeat, the hole is breached. It's not. It is not safe here. I must find a new spot. It knows I'm here. Hmm. Regarding your schedule this week, due to shortage of will and staff, we will need you to come into work this Saturday and Sunday. Thanks for being a team player. Rest assured, your additional labors will be recognized. Well, thanks a lot. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't do overtime. <laughs> uh, how much time? Uh, we should probably end it for this one, though. So sorry. So thank you all for watching. Uh, I, I, I wonder what I got wrong. Like, cause I know I definitely got probably at least two wrong. If it's eighty-eight percent. I feel like I would have done better if I could have just remembered what the heck some of that other stuff was for last time. I'm... I don't know. I wonder if I got the eye thing wrong. But, like, it usually tells you when you get things wrong. So either I got, like, the last one of the day wrong, or maybe they'll call me next time. I don't know. Because I'd assume they would have all called me before the shift ended, but maybe not. I don't know. But we'll find out next time. So thank you all for watching and let me know what you think of the video down in the comments below and I will see you in the next one. This is Casper Kuma, over and out. <laughs>